Hi, Mr. Palmer here. Uh, last one, I think, in this little series on file organization, I'm calling the night. It's about half one now. <laughs> so, this one is looking at um, basically how does direct access work. So, we have serial files, sequential file, index sequential. We have random files, and this one is called direct access. Okay. So, basically, why are we looking at file organization? Remember that we're storing the data. Um, the data needs to be organized within the file. Okay, so we can actually retrieve that data. And different methods of organization have different advantages, and so they'll be used in different situations. Now, just to recap again over the problem of a sequential file. Okay, so say for example, this is a typical field of da uh, data structure. Okay, um, being used. So, student, student ID, the first name, family name, and the form. Okay, I've got four fields per record. So, if I'm searching that sequential file, the software is actually expecting to read four fields per record. So if I wanted to access the third record, it's expecting to go through eight fields before it gets to that third record. If I'm going to access the 40th record, the program is expecting to go through 136 fields before it gets to that record. Okay, so changes to the record structure basically means changes to the code. All right, if I'm going to add in a, an extra field, so I now want to have five fields per student, I've got to change the code, I've got to test it, I've got to recompile it, and then obviously every time I make changes, going through that process is going to cost me money. It could lead to further errors in the code, which could lead to further problems, etc. etc. Okay, we want to kind of avoid that. All right, so one way of going getting past that is if I'm using a sequential file and I've got a specified record structure, okay, I can use direct access. So, for example, if the employer ID is an integer that takes two bytes, I'm using ASCII to store the text for 20 characters, 20 bytes plus 20 bytes for the surname, plus 11 bytes for the landline, plus 256 bytes for the character for the surname. If I add them all together, I know that one record is going to take 309 bytes. I wasn't expecting them all to animate at the same time, but basically here we go. Right, so the position of the first record is going to be at zero bytes, because it's going to be at the beginning of the file. Okay, position of record two is going to be at 309 bytes, because if the first record is 309 bytes long, then the second one is going to start at the 309th, 310th byte, 309th byte. The second, you know, the third one's at 618. The tenth one will be at 2781. Record 15 will be at 4326, etc. Et so, based on that, you should actually be able to work out a formula in terms of direct access. We can, if we know the size of the record because the record structure has been specified and it's adhered to, then we can basically jump directly to a record by following a formula. So, the address of the nth record is equal to the address at the beginning of the file, because depending on where it's still on the disk, plus n minus 1 times the record size. Because remember, the first record starts at the 0th byte. Okay, uh, and you can probably see some problems with this because any unused bytes basically need to be filled up with spaces in order to preserve the record length. That therefore is a waste of memory, and any changes to the structure, say for example, I want to increase the field length, okay, I want to decrease the field length, I need to reprogram the system in order to cope with that new f um, adjustment to the formula, okay, so we can, re we can retrieve the correct data, okay. An alternative to approach to this is to use markers, for example, in a comma separated values file, okay, CSV. We can see there's some sample data, We've got three records in this file about uh, cars, two records, sorry. Um, the program is basically counting the fields by looking for a delimiter. So a delimiter is a special character that's used to mark the separation between two records, okay. So um, direct access is sometimes called random access. But don't confuse this with a random file. It's called random access because you can randomly access any file that you want because you can directly jump to it if the records are of fixed length. Okay, so basically you should be able to see from that how that direct access works. Data is already organized sequentially in the file. The records are of a fixed size and so therefore you can jump directly to any record in the file as long as you know its position and you know the size of a single record. And that formula also the start uh, address of the file. Okay, that's it.